Good morning. It's a um, it's a fun time when uh, whenever I get the opportunity to stand up. Well, it may not be fun for you guys, but uh, but it is for me. And um, there's uh, it's always nice um, after Sunday school. And uh, I'd mentioned I said, well, we probably need to get in there because um, I'm supposed to preach today. And Jody said, well, let's, let's gather around you and, and pray for you. And, uh, and they did. And then good buddy Joe says, well, now pray for us because we have to listen to him twice. <laughs> Isn't that love? I tell you, that, that's just... Um, but uh, this morning, I, I want us to take the first steps to possible. Taking the first step to possible. Um, first of all, I got a question. I don't want you to raise your hands because I know some people are just afraid to raise their hands because they think they're volunteering for something. But do you believe the Bible is filled with truth? Okay. Now, see, amens are good. You don't, I mean, you didn't raise your hands, but yeah. Yeah, it is. Sometimes we don't act like it, you know, like it only applies to certain individuals. Um, but I want to ask you this question then. Do you believe or lean towards possible or impossible? You know, which, which one do you lean towards? The possible or impossible? Um, and, and we all lean, we, you know, I, I always disagree with individuals who said, well, I'm neutral on the subject. Um, I, I just, I've never really seen it. Pat, you're right behind that plant. Could you move over, please? No, it's... Uh, there we go. Thank you. You're all right. Um, when, when individuals say, I, I really don't lean one way or the other, I, I really don't have an opinion on it. Yeah, well, you do. You have an opinion on everything. That's like when someone, a waiter or a waitress comes up and, and asks you, uh, you know, hey, what, what would, you, uh, would you like dessert? Yeah, I always want dessert. I don't always want to pay for it. But the thing is, if they say, what do you want? Do you think I'm just going to say, bring me whatever? I don't care. I really don't have an opinion on it. I'm neutral. And then next thing I get lizard tongue pie. You know, I mean, that's, that's the way it would be. I don't know if there is such a thing, but it fits good here because it does matter to me. I, I, I have an opinion on a lot of different things. But we have to... You know, I guess we all take a look at things and, and we get them in our heads. We make up our minds either something is possible or impossible. We, we just do that. Um, I, I was training an individual one time for a company that I had worked for. I was a driver trainer for him, and, and it was his first time out in, a, in the semi. And um, it was his first toll booth he was going through in a semi. He made a lot of people behind him very mad because it was, it was going through the Chicago area and he pretty well stopped because he said he couldn't fit through. He said, I can't go through there. I said, yes, you can. And he said, no, I can't. And I said, yes, you can. And, and you know, it was that, that back and forth thing because it, it seems tight. And I said, do you see all these? Do you think I would ask you to go through something you couldn't? It's my truck. I mean, you know you, you know, you can fit through there. But in his head, he was bigger than the toll booth. Wasn't going to do it. It was impossible for him. And um, now, going more, I guess, in a personal manner, if, if I was to ask someone in here this morning, uh, a young athletic individual, um, to come up here and to do 100 jumping jacks, would you say possible or impossible? Yeah. Yeah, you would. You'd say possible. Now, our pastor had just had his second knee surgery in a short amount of time. Now, if, I, if he was here and I said, Pastor Lyle, why don't you jump up here on stage and do 100 jumping jacks? Possible or impossible? 
Now see, everyone's trying to be spiritual. You got an individual. Well, with God, all things are possible. But in your head, in your head, what are you saying? Yeah. It's just what we do. Hey, and this is my water. I forgot about it. it you know, I apologize in advance to my family. Because I have a tendency at times that when I think it, it falls out of my mouth. And, uh, and I try not to do that, but I can't stop myself. But um, human nature is that we will look at every situation and we have a tendency to say, yes, I can do that. Nope, totally impossible. And so I want us to go through some scripture this morning. We, we're going to read out of Numbers chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, and then 17 to 24. And I, I want us to read this, and then we, we have several other passages that we're just going to talk about and bring up, because I want you to understand that there's in things in your life right now, every one of us, and we're looking and we're going, yes, this is doable, I can do this, this is fantastic. But then there's other situations you're going, it's a no-go, impossible. You know, and, and so we're going to, to cover this more. But... Before we, we read, let's, let's have a quick prayer. Father, we just come before your throne this morning. Wow, God, so very thankful for the opportunity we have of opening your word. This is the word of God, and help us to treat it as such. God, to know that uh, this is you speaking to us. Um, wow, God, when we read it, we know that it's truth. We've, we've already said that. Um, help us, Lord, to keep it in our minds that if it's in the Bible, we can take it and we can believe it and walk in it. I do thank you, God, and I'm asking, Father, once again, that you would uh, just please help. Father, that everything that would be spoken, that you would be glorified, that, God, we'd be able to look at you and to say, Father, please be happy with what you see in my life. I love you, I thank you, and I praise you, Father, and ask God for your anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. Numbers chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, and then jumping to 17 to 24. In verses 1 and 2, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. Now, let's jump over to, to verse 17. It says, when Moses sent them to explore. Now, keep in mind, I mean, this is a very familiar passage. And, you know, we're, we're looking at this. But these were men who had gone, who were leaders, of their tribes and so you, you got to keep that in mind through this whole thing because when we finish this message I want you to, to to figure out in your life what's possible that may be something that you had seen that's no it, it, it can't happen it's impossible yeah it can you just got to trust but in verse 17 when Moses sent them to explore Canaan he said go up through the Negev and on into the hill country. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they have or do they live in? Are they, are they walled or unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees on it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land it was the season for the first ripe grapes. So they went up and explored the land from the desert of Zan as far as Rehob toward Lebo Hamath. They went up through the Negev and came to Hebron where I just, I love these names. They always make me hesitate. Ahemon, or Ahemon, you, you hear it the way ever you want. Shesha, Talma, the descendants of Anak lived he, where they lived, Hebron had been built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. When they reached the valley of Eshol, they cut off a branch 
bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them, I just love this, two of them carried it on a pole between them along with some pomegranates and figs. What, or that place was called the Valley of Eshol because of the cluster of grapes the Israelites cut off there. At the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. They went in and they explored this land. And one thing that we must keep in mind before we go any further, you know, remember what God said. We, we have to remember what God said. Before they give this report, what did God say in verse 2? Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to you. I mean, God said, I'm, I'm giving you this land. I, I'm, I'm doing this for you. And then these 12 men walk in, they come back and, and they come out and, and things are just great. Um, man, they started to say all the right things. Uh, it started off really good, you know, the men were saying, oh my goodness, the land looked good. I, I mean, it was beautiful, you should have seen it, guys. And then, and, and look at this cluster of grapes. How many of you pick grapes? And it takes two men to carry that with some pomegranates and figs. I mean, that's our grapevine. I'm, I hold them like this here, and, I'm, I'm, and you know, it's like, well, that, I need to, need to get in the sandal over there to help me carry this in the house, you know, type of a thing. It's, it's not exactly the way it happened here. I mean, this is, this is legitimate um, cluster of grapes. I mean, this, this was amazing. And everything was looking so good. It started off just great, and then someone throws in the butt. Why does this have to happen? Because we, we see then in, in verse 28, uh, this was all good. It was flowing with milk and honey. But the people who live there, the, the, they're too big. The cities are too fortified. They're too strong. Yes, the land was good. It was all great. These 12 leaders, these, these 12 leaders of their tribes went in and they seen that the land was great, but then it's like, oh, that guy's big. Boy, that city is really fortified. I'm not sure what we need to do here. This, I mean, this is, this is beyond us. And then you got, you know, Caleb and jo Joshua, and they're going, yeah, but look at these grapes. And, and don't forget what God said, and they're just ignoring. Because, see, they already had the ten, already had their minds made up, can't be done. Good grapes. I mean, boy, grapefruit, they grow great stuff. Everything is good, but uh-uh, can't do it. What did God say? Didn't God say, I'm giving you this land? Isn't that what God said? Why can't we just take God at what he says? Why can't we just read the scriptures and say, this thus saith the Lord. He said, I'm giving you Canaan. Go get it. I, I, he didn't even, I mean, he just, go get it. Now, God gave us a brain. That's, that's one thing Dustin likes saying is God gave us a brain to think. And you know he did. He just, he, go in there, take a look at it, and all you do, just figure out how you want to do it. But I'm giving it to you. It's yours. That should have been a given. Should have been. But they've just seen it, that it, it was impossible. And, and here we have, you know, this, this thing about majority rules. Beloved, we, we see that Majority may rule, but the majority is not always right. I mean, throughout the scriptures, we see that there's a lot of times, that, like in here, the 10 out of the 12 said, can't do it. The two out of the 12 were right. God said, I'm giving this to you, but 10 of them said, mm -mm, I, we can't do it, it's impossible. And so when we look at this, the, the scriptures really do make it plain and because there's going to be times when you feel all alone in your life in in your walk 
You know, and, and you may say these things, like, oh, no one understands, and, and probably a lot more understand than what you think, but we have a tendency at times to forget that sometimes we are in the minority as God's children because there's a reason why in Matthew 7 it says, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. We are told all along that people who walk with God are actually the smaller number. We are the minority, but we're right. We are the right ones. And we always have to believe that. We have to know that. We have to walk in that. I want to now go to this, you know, the things in the scriptures that impossible are possible. The Bible shares with us so many wonderful things and wonderful events that took place that most individuals that, that were there at that point in time, it's, well, that, you know, I, boy, I can't understand this. This is impossible. In 1 Samuel 17, it gives an account of the Philistines, Goliath, the Israeli army, and David. The Philistine army was standing there, and, and, and these were some of the words used to describe the Israeli army at that point in time. They were dismayed and terrified. And it says they all ran from him, from Goliath, in great fear. Well, you know, Goliath stood over nine feet tall. It's been a long time since I've seen someone nine feet tall. They were on a ladder when I seen them. But, you know, here, the, here we are. They seen an army and a giant that they could not defeat. In their heads, we could not win. It's impossible. We lost before we even started. Apparently, David did not get the memo. David pops up. He went there because his dad asked him to go, hey, would you take some stuff to your brothers? They're burning a lot of calories right now because of their shaking so much and it burns a lot, so go give them some more food. They're scared to death. All they could see was Goliath standing out there taunting them, yelling at them, shouting to them, send your best man. And they all seen it as totally impossible. David, he stood with God. Because he, I, I love this when David said, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? This was David's approach to the nine foot character out here. All the rest of the army goes, David, shh, we don't want him to hear you. David, would you please just go back to your sheep? David, please be quiet. And the brothers are talking amongst themselves going, I told you this guy was going to be trouble. You know, I mean, this is what is going on. Because, see, they seen the impossible, and David said, who does this guy think he is? Why are you guys standing there and letting him talk this way to us? Why don't you do something about this? And someone, you know, and probably one of his brothers, because that's what big brothers do. Why don't you do something about it? He says, I will. Thank you. And they tried to put armor on him, and he said, nope, can't do that. I like my, sh my shepherd stuff. Let me just grab a few stones, and I'll go take care of this problem for you. He went, he grabbed his stones, got his sling, and it was a high-powered sling. It was like a 12-gauge sling. I mean, it, it was, I mean, he, he had killed bears and lions, lions, oh my, you know, you just, isn't that what you just want to say after you say some of those words? But here he is. David now is to this point of going, I just, I'm tired of hearing what he's saying to us. Who is he to defy the armies of the living God? And the things that were going on. So what happened? David goes out there. Got the, I just, I still don't know how in the world someone would be that good, but I guess you, and he, boy, he, boom, right in the head, knocked him down and cut his head off. It's, so it's one of these things that we look at and we just, and we, in our heads, we wonder what made David different. 
Why did David lean towards, yeah, this is possible. I can take care of this. Because he knew he wasn't doing it alone. He was going with God, wasn't he? Why were the others that were a part of the army of God, why, why were they standing back and shaking and quaking in their boots? I don't know. In Daniel chapter 3, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood against an entire kingdom when they refused to bow down to that 90-foot idol made of gold. In today's standards, a lot of money. 90 feet high. And Nebuchadnezzar had said, hey, when you hear the music, when you hear all this going on, I need you to bow down to this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, no, sorry, can't do that. And I, I, I love this little back and forth there. It says that it, out, of, out of Daniel chapter 3, verses 13, 18, it says, furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold that I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if our, that makes ours, we need some more instruments, don't we? How many of you play the lyre? If I knew what it was, I may take it up. But, I, I, but here they are. There. He says, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to them, King Nebuchadnezzar, you're absolutely right. We apologize. We will start bowing down immediately. I read that wrong. King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If you are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. They stood against an entire kingdom. So many were saying that this would be impossible to do. No. We know Daniel did. We know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood against. They did the impossible. Because what happened to them to next? They were not fried Hebrews. They threw them in. The individuals who threw them in were killed because of the heat. And they start walking around. And there was a fourth man in there. That's impossible. How they just walking around when the ones who threw them in were killed. It's impossible. Well, yeah. we'll tell them that because when they walked out and they're praising God, they're, I mean, you know, they're walking down there with him and he's going, those guys, look at them, look at down there. Can you just imagine? I mean, when they look down and they're going, oh, wow. Well, there's something about this. When you do things with God, anything is possible. No matter what's going on in your life, it's possible. Don't doubt. Be encouraged. Then it goes on because in Exodus 14, there's a Red Sea right there. You have the big Israeli group of people. Pharaoh's army is behind them. And, you, and, you, and we see all this. I mean, there's impossible or possible. I mean, that's, that's one of those situations that a lot of times we look at and we go, okay, we're done for. As a matter of fact, they, they started letting Moses know that, didn't they? They started telling Moses, we would have been better off if you would have just left us back there to be the slaves of the Egyptians. Why, why in the world did you bring us out here to die? Moses, what is your problem? And Moses literally said to them, why don't you guys just be still and let God work? I mean, that's what he, hey, just be still and, and watch what God's going to do. And so now all of a sudden it, it says here uh, that Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and all that night the Lord, and that happened. We, we think it's Charlton Heston standing there type of thing. You know, that they, they just said, hey, you know, and the sea started parting. But that's, I don't know if they were, hey, or not. That's, that was just mine. I threw that in. It wasn't in the Bible. But, it, but it's one of those things that what made the, part, the sea part? 
It took all night. God sent this wind. There it goes. The wind, it starts blowing the line, and they walked through on dry land, a wall on their left of water and a wall on their right of water. That's impossible. How many of you would have walked through and said, man, this is great. Look at the she shell and everything. No, you would have been, if you were like me, I don't, maybe you are a shell hunter, I don't know. Me, I would have been looking and just at the walls of the water on both sides. No, because I'd want to be Moses. I'd want to play, I'd be Charlton Heston there. And, and, you know, I'd be the one going, keep following me, guys. Come on, come on, quit looking at the water. You know, but there are so many who were, they, that's exactly what they're doing because to them it's still impossible that we can walk through this. So what's impossible? Well, I don't know. Let's stick with the water theme. In Matthew 14, good old Peter. They were going on a boat, weren't they? Uh, and during a storm. They're walking around there. They see someone coming across there. And who is that? And by the way, why is he walking on the water? He gets closer and Peter yells out to him and says, if this is really you, Lord, ask me to come out to you. And the words of Jesus verbatim, Peter, the water is fine. Come on in. And what did Peter do? Peter walked out. He, he stepped out, and he just started walking towards the water. Now, one thing that always bothers me is that we seem to only remember the negative things about individuals at times. Isn't that terrible? You know, with David, they spend so much time on some of the failures of David instead of knowing all the wonderful accomplishments with Peter. All we can seem to remember at times is, yep, yeah, he took his eyes off Jesus, didn't he? Yeah, I don't know if they say it that way or not. That was also just thrown in for me. But the thing is, what happened is that he was walking on the water. The, the other 11 didn't even get out of the boat. Yeah, who for Peter? He got out of the boat. He started walking. He was doing the impossible. They're all sitting there going, oh, my goodness. They might pinch me, you know, and they all were bruised up afterwards because they thought they were dreaming this can't be happening. Yeah, Peter was walking on the water. You can't just walk on water. I've tried it. It doesn't work. Maybe, I, maybe no one is standing out there walking on the water and saying, Carl, come on out. But here in Matthew, is that impossible? No, not if Jesus says, come on out. I'm on my last page now. That should thrill a lot of you. So when we get out of the boat and walk, we find out that there's some amazing things that can happen. I've got three pictures. Did you... you there's one should be popping up here. Picture be popping up there. There we go. Looky there. You know how many people I can feed with that catfish? That's a nice size catfish. Wasn't bad. You know how many? Two, three hundred people with that catfish right there? You all know where I'm already going with this, don't you? You think that's two, three hundred people? Four? Four hundred maybe? I mean, if we cut them small enough and everything. I mean, but then everyone to be full. We, we may have to, I, I don't know, it's, I still think that's impossible. Can't be done. Uh, the, the next one there, John, because, it, oh, oh my word, Herb, does that look familiar? You netted that fish. Thanks, Herb, appreciate that. This is, uh, my family's probably never seen this picture before, you know, outside of the big one that I may have had on metal hanging on the wall. But... <laughs> But how many will this feed? 1,000, 1,200? <laughs> there we go. I like Joe. See, the, the thing is, in my head, that's, that's impo I'm, I'm still not going to feed Bluffton. I'm not, I'm not going to do a whole lot. But there's, there's one more picture I want you to see. I'm, I'm going to get, oh, look. I literally caught that on a hook. Now, what I want you to understand is how many people can I fill to capacity if I give this to God? See, I can do, I can do 
things on my own and it's impossible for me to do that. But I could give that whopper, Junior, to God and could be amazed at what God could do with it. See, what's impossible to me, if I just get God involved, all of a sudden becomes possible. In my head, I limit so many things. Uh, God can do all things because he has no limits. So I just want to ask here in, in closing, what is your impossible? What thing is going on in your life um, there may be some here this morning you just feel like you're in a no-win situation you're discouraged you're defeated just can't seem to get out of this it's impossible I don't know what to do it can be family it can be finances it can be a physical issue it can be relationships it can be emotional mental strain spiritually struggling something's got a hold of you and you just can't get rid of it what is your impossible sometimes I get so weary of talking to individuals who will say God can't forgive me I've done too much How do you, in a Christian way, tell them they're full of baloney? Most of them have never even tried it. Asked the guy one time who just said, God can't forgive me, I've done too much. And I said, have you even asked him? Have you even sought him out? Have you even talked to God about this? Individuals who have things going on in their lives and they just can't seem to get over them. If they talk to God, I mean, it's impossible to them, but what about God? And if you feel all alone, well, you're in great company. If you feel sometimes you're all alone, well, everything we read this morning, Caleb and Joshua felt pretty alone in the midst of all that. David felt pretty alone in all that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't have a huge crowd fighting for them. You got the Red Sea. All this is going on. You're in good company if you feel like, I don't know, maybe you're fighting a battle all by yourself. What is your Canaan land that you need to possess? What is your Canaan that God said, I'm giving it to you? All you got to do is go get it. What, what is your giant that needs to be killed? You're looking at that giant and going, I can't take him on. But God is saying, sure, all you need is a few stones in your sling. You can do it, go. I'm giving you the ability to do it. What fire are you walking through? that you just, it's impossible. What Red Sea do you need God to part for you? Remember, the wind blew all night long. And what do, in our human nature, what do we do? We stand there and we go, man, I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> all I'm doing is fighting the wind. It's messing my hair up. No, God's working. Just let him... Keep blowing that red seal part. What storm are you going through that you need to walk on top of? That you just feel like it's impossible. I can't. I can't step out of the boat. What 5,000 do you need to feed? Can take something so small because God wants to do the impossible. Just want to ask you this question this morning. Beloved, what is going on in your life right now that seems bigger than what you can handle? 
Every one of us go through different situations. Things that we look at and we're going, man, this is so big. And God's saying, apparently you're not seeing it from my point of view. It's not that big. If you'll just let me guide that stone to the giant's head, I'll take care of that giant for you. If you'll just let me, if you'll just wait all night long, I'll just blow that wind and I'll part the Red Sea for you. If you'll just, if you'll just let me walk through the fire with you, we're going to come out and it's going to be just fine. All these instances. There's some of you that may need to, I mean, I just, going through this, there's a reason why God wanted me to talk about this this morning. There's some we just need to come before God and just say, God, yeah, I've made this bigger than you when it's not even close to bigger, being bigger than God. And there's some relationships. There's family issues. There's finances. There's physical things. And we're looking at them and we're going, man, this is crazy. But God says, no. Let me walk through it with you and you'll find out. It's not that big. It's not that bad. It's not that strong. It's not that hot. What's impossible? I'd like, if you would, just to stand with me. This morning, in this time of closing prayer, are there those who would just like to, you'd like to just come and just to, to have this closing prayer and just to say, God, you know my situation. You know what's been really worrying me or bothering me. God, I'm, I'm just going to come down. I'm just, I'm sitting right here. I don't know. I just, I just know that in a congregation of this size, there's individuals who have some impossible things in your life right now that God is saying, no, I want to make it possible. I want to make it possible. Are there those that just, would you like to come down and just to, to have a, a closing time in prayer? Here it is, God. Here it is. I, it's, here's what I heard, but nope. I'm, I'm going to let you be bigger. I'm going to let you be stronger. Lots of Red Seas, lots of storms, lots of fires. Let God be God. Let's pray. Father, we come before your throne this morning. Wow, God. It really is humbling when we start thinking that with you, nothing is impossible. Father, there are those that are coming down here this morning and, and they're laying some pretty heavy things at your feet God all of us have gone through different things different struggles different we've heard different things going on around us and God we've made them so big but Lord Father in heaven we come before you and yield this to you help me Father Help me to always see that there's no giant too big. There's no Canaan I cannot possess if you give it to me. There's no fire that's too hot. There's no storm that's so bad I can't walk on the water. And there's no need that cannot be met if I just give you what I have. Father, please as there are those whose hearts right now, Lord, they're just laying it before you and they're just saying, here it is, God. This is so big, I can't handle it on my own. 
So walk with me. Stand with me. Ask me to come out and meet you on the water. God, I don't know what the result of me giving you this small of a fish, but I got a feeling you can feed thousands with it. It's all these type of situations. There's, Father, there's decisions that have to be made and they seem so big. There's, there's things that have discouraged us that, God, you are an encourager. Father, take us where you'd have us to go. Break our hearts, Father, if that's what needs to be. But help us to understand that you then know how to bring that heart back to wholeness again. Father, I thank you. Your word, Father, is filled with truth. Help us to accept it as that. Lord, lighten the load that some have come down with. Some have, we have family and friends, Lord, that we pray for that are lost. God, I sure hope you break our hearts for those. Father, the best decision we've ever made was to say yes to you. Please, Father, no matter what the situation is, be glorified. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And God, it's in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we, Lord, not only pray, but we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, thank you all so much.